So really aimed at trying to foster that stronger relationship. But as you point out, Peter, President Obama has to walk a very fine line. On the one hand, he needs China for a number of things like fighting Ebola, fighting ISIS, trying to get Iran to give up its nuclear program. On the other hand, uh, White House officials say he needs to be firm with China's leader, Xi Jinping, on issues like human rights abuses here, the pro-democracy protesters. Uh, so it is certainly a tricky dance that President Obama has to pull off. And against that backdrop that you talked about, Peter, the fact that President Obama has made this pivot to Asia a key foreign policy priority, a lot of people think he has taken his eye off the ball. So one of the things aimed at making the point that he hasn't is that agreement that you talked about to expand visas between the United States and China, which would essentially make it easier for people to travel between the two countries. It would also, according to the White House, generate about 440,000 new jobs. One other point I will make, Peter, uh, President Vladimir Putin of Russia is also here. Of course, relations quite tense between the United States and Russia right now. No plans for a formal meeting, but one White House official tells me that he is not ruling out the possibility that President Obama and President Putin could have an impromptu conversation during the course of this meeting. Peter, uh, President Obama is here for three days, and then he heads to Myanmar, and then he rounds out this trip at the G20 summit in yeah. Brisbane. In Australia, by the way, President Putin will be there as well.